Miracle Beauty. I wanted to do a somewhat quick update on where I'm at with my no buy. So in February I posted a video that basically broke down, actually I think it was March, I apologize. So in March I broke down a video of how much I had spent in January, February, and March. February I had identified that I wanted to do a no buy slash low buy. I spent an enormous amount of money in those three months. Um, Honestly, I I look back and a lot of the purchases were foolish. A lot of the purchases were, that's popular, everyone likes it, I need it too. When really, when I got the product, it was very anticlimactic. It wasn't even, I regretted it pretty much immediately, but again, wanted to grow my collection, wanted to have these popular items, things like that. So as I started reviewing my habits of shopping, I realized that there were certain key things that made me purchase things. One of them is, I was really falling for the limited edition gimmick. It was something that I just, I couldn't get my head wrapped around the, um, that not all of them really were limited edition, first of all, and that it wouldn't be the end of the world if I didn't get that product. So that was one of the first things that I changed. Anything limited edition, I am currently not purchasing. So I did um, finish March somewhat strong. The end of March, I didn't spend a ton. I actually, I think the last seven days I spent zero, but I'm not 100%, so I don't want to promise that. So moving into April, I actually spent zero dollars on skincare, beauty, anything of that regard. I actually literally spent not one dollar. And I honestly felt very triumphant. I felt very like I just killed it. In fact, there was a couple of things that were released during that month that I wanted really bad. And I almost broke and purchased, like I've mentioned this in a previous video, I went to the new Morphe store near my house at Somerset Mall. And I tried out the concealers and I tried out the powder. And the powder was scented so strongly, I actually found it repulsive. It's not anything against him. I do get migraines and I don't care for a strong sense. I had hoped it was gonna be lightly scented. Not all scented products bother me. For example, the Sweet Peach, Sweet Peach Collection by Too Faced. I love that collection. I, it's Even their chocolate ones, too. I don't have a problem with their scents, but that powder I personally just found to be very overbearing, and I wasn't sure how long it would remain around. So if I was to buy it for as expensive per ounce as that product is, and then it smelled all day, I would have been very unhappy with my purchase, and I'm pretty sure that Morphe is zero returns. So um, the concealer, I actually found it to be very creamy and very, you know, workable, but there was not one shade that really lined up with me. I think it possibly could be the Lustrous C5, I'm not sure, but it also was not a firm concealer. It was more so like the Makeup Forever type. It, I like the um, Tarte Shape Tape firmer ones, so that's one of the reasons. So I actually did get through the month without purchasing anything. I actually got through a large portion of May as well. It was not until mid-month that I kind of ran into some hiccups. I ran out of um, any serums that I had in the house other than one last sample, and I did want to purchase it prior to running out. So I did run to TJ Maxx, or excuse me, I ran to Marshalls, and they had some amazing skincare on sale, some Dermalogica-type brands, and I wanted to pick them up as we know that things rotate through TJ Maxx and Marshalls are always available the next time you go. So unfortunately, I did spend, I have notes here, let me see. I did spend $79 that day at Marshalls. Again, it was on skincare, and I did check the effective, effective expiration dates, and none of them are within a close time period, so I feel comfortable with that. The only problem that I have with it is it did technically violate my no-buy because I was only out of one of the products. So one of them I bought was, I bought a serum, and I bought the oil, and I bought a... Um, I can't even think what, what they were, but they were like, um, one was a primer, one was an oil. So it was just a kind of hodgepodge of things that I actually didn't require. I didn't need to buy. They were great purchases. They were name brands like First Aid Beauty and things like that, that actually have really high, um, original cost if I were to go to Sephora or some of those stores. But I didn't have to buy it then, and so that's why it was kind of a regret purchase. And I don't ever, unless it's just horrible, return to them because it's already a clearance center, so I kind of feel foolish going in there to return something. So life lesson learned. I will be more, you know, concentrated in my shopping when it comes to replacing things as per my no-buy. The next time I broke my no-buy was I actually spent in two separate purchases on Mercari. I spent $19.78 and $1.79. I actually got nearly new products with those expenses and it was products that I've been wanting to try but did not want to pay full price as I wasn't sure if they would work for my formulation or my skin tone. So I am happy with that. That one honestly does not bother me especially as much as decluttering as I've been doing during the month of May. It's just been a real 
per session for me because I, there's so much I have that I just don't really like. There's some formulas I thought I was going to love and didn't. So the last thing as money spent was at Sephora. I actually spent $43. I had a gift card for Mother's Day and I went over by $43. Again, that one, I wasn't thrilled with the fact I went over, but I wasn't super mad either. I did buy products that I felt that were going to be used that were not going to sit there. And it was because I desired the product versus what actually um, was happening before with just purchasing them because they looked interesting or were popular or were, you know, um, limited edition. That one, I ended up getting two products in there that I, I just didn't prefer. Um, one was the Ole Hendrickson um, Banana Primer. No matter how I used it, my foundation just slid right off my face. The first time I used it, my makeup looked absolutely flawless. I loved it. By noon, there was no makeup in my nose area, and I do not have oily skin at all. So the next time I used it, I made sure that I did not put any of the primer on my nose. I actually only used the MAC Paint Pot that I use on my nose. That was the only thing I used, and again, it slid off my cheeks and my chin and, and down here. So I just found that that primer just doesn't work for my skin. I'm not sure if it's the primer itself or just how my skin reacts to it or how the different um, foundations that I'm using. I did use one foundation pretty consistently during that time frame. I actually was using the um, Laura Mercier Longwear and the Candid Foundation, and they both perform the exact same way with that primer. The other thing that I did return was the Fenty Beauty Butter um, loose powder. I actually wanted that, I think, for like six months. It was like on my list. I couldn't wait. I love the lavender. I thought it was going to work the same. It almost like oxidized on my skin. So when it was in the actual pan or the jar, it looked like it was a very pale, nowhere near a banana at all. I mean, it's a very pale. It's like a tinted translucent powder. And when I put it on my skin, again, no matter what foundation I use, it kind of deepened, almost looked like a banana or worse. But also, again, I dealt with the my dry skin causing it to feel crispy in different areas on my face. And nobody ever wants a crispy face. Let me say that. So I exchanged those and I actually purchased... Um, the what is the name of that primer the milk makeup um hydro grip primer and i have to say i am loving that primer i think it's much more built for my makeup habits and then the other thing that i purchased i can't even remember what i purchased oh i got the first a beauty water um, moisturizer so I hear the rain starting again. I've actually been trying to film all day and waiting for the rain to subside because I am in a non-temperature um, controlled area that actually has a tin roof. And so when it rains, you can hear everything on the microphone. So that is my update on my no buy. I am doing a absolutely zero dollar no buy in June. And then we'll see in July. I actually think maybe this alternating helps me because I still spent far less than I did in any of the prior months. And so, but I also got to purchase something and got to get some new things into my collection as I am decluttering so much. I will be posting an updated inventory and declutter video shortly and probably by June, maybe in the middle of June, I'm not sure yet because I'm still kind of decluttering, but I hope you like this video. I hope that you will click subscribe and I hope that you will come back and see me. If you ring the notification button, you will see that we update every Thursday and Sunday and I hope to see you soon.